You welcome back. This is Breakfast Daily. Time now to move closer into our communities to um, bring to light some challenges that some Ghanaians have to deal with, you mm. know. And um, whatever happens anywhere in this country, it has some kind of ripple effects, you know, on all of us. And so what is happening in someone's locality is an issue for all of us. Yeah. And that is why we do this every morning to make sure that those who must help, you know, bring sanity to the system are updated or are brought up to speed with what is going on. Mm. Today we're starting off from Commenda. Now there are terrible roads. I know that you probably tell me that your neighborhood is no better. Mine is no better either. But there are certain places that we bring out because of the kind of um, um, challenges they mm. pose to economic activities and uh, I mean challenges they pose to livelihoods, yeah, to people doing stuff, I mean everything. everything. And yeah. that is why, you know, we may highlight one challenge over yours. We are not trying to belittle yours in any way. But let's go to Commander um, I mean, community and see what their problems are in terms of poor net road network. We have a report on that. Let's take a look. When we come back, we will discuss this further and ask Questions. A drive through the Commenda Town Roads that also connects to the Commenda Sugar Factory may seem as though one is having a roller coaster ride that comes with uncertainty as the five kilometer stretch has developed huge gullies and potholes. Drivers cannot phantom why authorities who in the first place build the sugar factory without fixing the road that connects to the factory. The drivers have been left at the mercy of the deplorable road, which has huge galleys and potholes. They lament that monies generated from their job is mostly used in buying spare parts to fix their vehicles as a result of the bad nature of the road. They tell City News now that government is revamping the Commander Sugar Factory, they should factor in fixing the five kilometer Commander Town Road that also links to the Commander Sugar Factory. <laughs> There, there be a yakas, yakalupo, cast, there be a cast in your brigand or corner. There be a wobble joint to the two. Water road, yas and papa cry, the quantity, no question, one more for now, one will be a part of whiskey here, or dear man. Three days ago, four days and so to for a double singing. A pot of bread and sana, a biaco. A coffee marano, we gave you. And your pot was by your mouth was by no good or cornudo. Commander, what I said, I have a word you never. I'm going to command the Kagana. Yeah, from Haluko. First and second to Commander. So classical fighting this way. He'll do a quite a quantum water in him, yet to Abbaso. Sadana for the end of Saturn for all the court, you saw a tobe or tall last week. I don't want to know. Yeah, baby, I'll send out say, Yaji bed there. Two cities, six, I yaji five cities. Because we got for coin in tea. A person, this time, it didn't mean since this is your commander coin. I was sent by five minutes to look at Commander. Man, Mr. Commander, but since I'm coming, I'm going you <laughs> Mr. Moncompo, not bread and loose on the Pamacho. Meaning, name Marco uses. You're not tumped down in the Penel, no week. The four opponents. If you are worried about me, you're thirty-five, thirty-seven minutes and some module. If you are a quantabet, you're twenty-one minutes of paper, any module in Tibet, and in the Penel, no week. And see your corner, I'm your bread, and Cassan 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 Cassa. But member of parliament for Commander Edna Eguafo Ebrim, Samuel Atamils, had some explanations to do with regards to the Commander Sugar Factory Road not being fixed. That road had been given to a contract, and then uh, NPP came to power. What they did was they stopped all the road constructions, claiming that there were some malfeasance and that they were going to do an audit. Up till now, we never know what came out of the so-called audit that they did. I'm on the roads, uh, Roads and Transport Committee. We haven't had any report on any of the audits. They only did that just to frighten some people who they may claim as political uh, contractors or whatever it is. The truth of the matter is this government has squandered all the money. There is no money to pay contractors. This stretch connects from the Commander Sugar Factory to Commander Town. And residents here are worried for one thing, 
that this stretch is unmotorable. They want authorities to, as a matter of urgency, fix this stretch. According to residents here, they cannot understand why this stretch, which connects to the Commander Sugar Factory, has not been fixed since the construction of the factory. All right, so that report was by our colleague, Calvis Tete. And uh, Calvis is joining us on the line. Uh, good morning, Calvis. Yes, hello, David. Yeah, how are you doing this morning? Welcome to Breakfast Daily. I'm fine, David. How are you? Very well, thank you. Now, um, Calvis, what we saw there uh, was, was quite a bad road. Um, in terms of bad roads in Ghana, it's not necessarily uh, much that we have. But it's a very important road because of the, uh, of the sugar factory. My, my question, and I don't know if you've put this to any of the um, authorities that you've spoken to, is in the, in the consideration for uh, rehabilitating the sugar factory, why were the roads not in consideration? Well, you know, uh, David, that is a question that I think is left to the authorities to answer. I spoke to the people there within the commander enclave, and they were uh, actually disappointed that uh, the commander sugar factory was constructed by the S1 Mahama administration without putting into consideration the stretch that leads to the factory. Uh, you know, this stretch that leads to the factory does not only lead to the factory, it also leads to the commander uh, training college, that is Comenco, and then the commander senior high school. Okay. There are a lot of uh, schools on that stretch. So that stretch is one busy stretch in the commander enclave. And they are actually worried that uh, even though they constructed, even though they, they built the commander sugar factory, they didn't put into consideration uh, that portion of the road, that five kilometer stretch of the road that connects to the commander town to other adjoining communities. Uh, I also spoke to the uh, MP for the area, yeah. someone like Camille, and he made it clear to me that uh, they awarded that portion of the road to a, contra a contractor to, to work on it. But when the MPP came, they cancelled all those contracts and was part of the contract that was cancelled. The reason why the road has not been fixed, David. I see. This is very interesting. Um, especially because Commander Sugar Factory is one of those uh, factories that are, is ha heavily dependent on outgrower farmers. And so um, the movement of, um, uh, you know, the raw materials, you know, and then of course finished product in and out of the place is critical. Um, so, anyway, thank you very much, Calvis, uh, for speaking to us this morning. And for, well, uh, yes, go let me also quickly uh -huh. add that, you know, uh, drivers who also use that stretch have complained on several times uh, of, of, of their vehicles getting destroyed as a result of the road. Okay. They are saying that uh, they oftentimes visit the mechanic shop as a result of their road. There, was some, there were some instances where uh, a pregnant woman even gave birth in one of their uh, vehicles because the nature of the road was such that she couldn't speed up to intermittent and in keep coast. Yeah. And the drivers who use that road are actually worried. There are huge portals and galleys on that stretch that David, uh, you'd be surprised that we have such a huge project like the Commander Sugar Factory on that stretch. Mm. And so date, that portion of the road has not been fixed. And they want that portion of the road fixed whilst the, the, the Commander Sugar Factory is, 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 is also being worked at, David. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Calvis, for this update. We appreciate your time. Thank you. All right, so that was our colleague, Calvis Tete, bringing us the report from Commander, looking at the terrible state of the road there. And this, this, is, a, this is a road network that is around the factory um, and, of course, serving the um, enclave there. From mm. a, it's very disturbing because, and I say this, it's one thing to say, okay, so the erstwhile mm -hmm. NDC government uh, refurbished the, the, the factory, yeah. they didn't consider the roads mm -hmm. network. But this government has also gone in mm -hmm. after there was a, a lull and, a, you know, almost like the, the factory, almost as if the factory even wasn't working, mm. you know, and then has restored things. Again, the road is still the one that is looking like the, the orphan child. But David, you know, I, 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 I honestly think that um, we are all trying to play the ostrich, you know, because if we do not, as a people, come together to follow 
the National Development Plan. Mm. This is what is going to happen. Sure. Priorities are different. Mm. We know the way we treat NPP and NDC in this country. If there is no proper blueprint for us to say that this is what we are following as Ghana, yeah. whoever comes in, we say governance is um, um, a continuous uh, I mean, mm. journey. Yeah. Is that what we are seeing? Is it only in talk or indeed? You, you know where I'm coming from. Yeah. So, okay, we, we want to um, revive the Commander Sugar Factory. This was in 2016 by yeah. John Mahama. You know, what, what did we put in place? What did we also say that, okay, in case Mahama um, or the, and the NDC leaves office, yeah. what is expected of the new government that yeah. would come? Yeah. Are they supposed to be continuing with this? Yeah. You know, because we spend money to start projects and then the government that starts it loses power. Mm. They go out. And the next government that comes feel that if I go and do this, you know, the politics that comes yeah. with it is going to be, it was NDC or it was NPP projects. And so we said, and that kind of, okay, we started it, we finished it. Who, mm. who has done what? Mm. You know, this will not take us anywhere. No. And quite honestly, I, I believe that, yes, NPs are not supposed to be the ones, you know, to fix roads, yeah. but they are advocates. Yeah. Well, I haven't seen much, you know, from um, um, Mr. Samuel Atta, uh, yeah. uh, uh, <laughs> I was going to say Samuel Atta Mills, yeah. you know, um, on the floor of Parliament, always fighting for development to come to his yeah. community. Commun I am yeah. here to say that. Yeah. We are not saying that go and fix the mm. roads, but the people cannot all come <clears throat> and sit in Parliament. <clears throat> no, that is they why can't. they put all their power in, in you, you and their trust in and you that go them. and fight for us. You are are you doing that in Parliament? Yeah. It is not enough to come and stand on TV and say that, yes, and we awarded a contract, um, the, the, the road to a contractor, and the NPP, come, the, the NPP came and they cancelled it. And you are sitting down. Mm. What have you done? Yeah. Have you moved around to make your voice heard mm. that this is the challenge? You know, I, I, I think that the complaints are too much. If citizens are crying, leaders are leaders also crying. Must, leaders must so what should, what should we do? We should all sit yeah. down and, 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 and complain. Act. You know, I, I don't know if you've seen him on the floor no. of parliament, you no, know, to fight for no, commander. No, you know? Now, now, farmers are there. Mm. Um, um, drivers are there. What should they do? We have a project like Commander Sugar Factory mm, mm. that we would depend on raw materials from the area. Yeah. How would they... If I was set up largely Thank you, with the mind that, that outgrowers will feed the factory. You know, yeah. and, and for me, it, it's just not enough. And I yeah. think we've come to a stage in our lives where we should stop this um, um, new government will come. So, for instance, now um, we want to do Agenda 111, we want to do ABC, you know, in a situation when uh, 2024 NPP loses power, then someone else will come in yeah. and start a <clears throat> whole new so, project. So I guess the question that I would like to ask is, so for example, as an example, Agenda 111, is it part of the National Development Plan? Thank if you it's very not, much. where on earth did they come out of? You can't, you can't pull things out of the air and just no, no, throw but, it no, at, no, at no, Ghanaians. No, 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 but, but why not? We should be able to have all these things, you know, concretized in the National Development Plan. You know where I'm and from? then everybody comes, take a part of the plan and work the plan. David, we should, as a people, know our priorities. Yeah. What comes number one? Mm. What comes number two? What comes number three? Yeah. These are the kind the of guiding, uh, gu guiding yeah. stuff, you know, that we are going to be following mm. to vote for people. Yeah. So, for instance, um, when we were coming, we, we were doing free SHS. Yeah. Okay, now Ghanaians have adopted free SHS as part of um, our educational strategy, mm -hmm. as part of um, um, our national development plan. Yeah. This is what we all say we want. Yeah. Now, if this is what we all say we want, what is the government supposed to be mm. doing? So, when do, where do we start from? A, B, C. Mm -hmm. Whoever comes in, so if government A ends at B, yeah. whoever comes in, is supposed to continue, continue from, from B, continue yeah. from C. Yeah. Don't come and tell us that, as for you, your plan is maybe health. Yeah. So you are going to build hospitals. Yeah. And then we leave this. So we've started projects, you know. That is why Saglemi is still in the bush, yeah. Yeah. you know. And people still don't have places to sleep. It's ridiculous. Because it is not a certain government's priority. Mm. You know? But if we do this, it is the same Ghana money. So we start projects, scatter them all around. We never finish anything. And we are always crying. Well, we can go over to the Volta region now um, in a community called Cliffy. Uh, we'll see what's going on there again with poor 
road network. Farmers and residents who use this road have for several years complained of the bad nature of the stretch. According to the residents, they had high hopes their road, which leads to some markets in the Volta region, including Ho and Peve through Akrofu, would have been completed after it was awarded to Berop Ventures. Several months on, there has been no sign of the contractor on site. The residents, however, noted that the current state of the road is as a result of heavy trucks plying the road to first stand for construction and also by some waste companies who have to dump refuse at the municipality's landfill site daily. For the residents, there is the urgent need to address the situation. Me as a one member of the Viadu Corp, I can say our road is not good. And we let our assemblywoman know and he take the, our issue to the assembly. But that has to be done on, on it. And if we want to go to home with our food staff, we find it difficult uh, to get to home market because of the bad road. As you see, the road is not good. Uh, but assembly woman has done a lot of it, but we didn't see nothing on it. The Meti, Vazoto, Adukope, by the Zavizo Bella, Menu, Bedek Bedek Bedo, Evola, Efienye, Agbede Duko, Adukope, Agbede Duko. I can now do do home to my petty caca yde me a begin ha, caca yde pugodo, cacella, a more megalen, and then I can make you feel a bed, while long do do cot to a yde me a pay as you do make a cane ho. A webben do do get the la like bledgy like begbling, a more zutossi a to, a tossi sibli bo. Kiki a kilano like blood like red regilla, a mentor matas and more winton to go back pon kito glomile. Ta a one a bed mo to ham agata you. A go a bed a more. Doc Pletchy, I like Beg Bebera, and Ned Gedeme Clamu to cry, Agbo Amu, no young move our call. It has uh, really affected produ uh, productivity because if you look at the, the, the peasant farmer or the farmer who is into commercial uh, farm, and uh, sometimes to even convey him or herself to the farm every day to do, let's say, weeding, uh, moving, let's say, uh, chemicals. And other uh, uh, hot, uh, materials that are actually needed on the farm, uh, that's a problem. Uh, it's a problem. They also complain about the health hazard a temporary landfill site poses. Municipal Chief Executive for the Home Municipality, Divine Boston, tells City News, the Assembly is working to reaward the contract following the disappointment. He also noted that the Assembly is working with feeder roads to complete over ninety percent of roads in the municipality. Uh, just last week, I was privileged to invite the regional managers of both feeder roads and highways. Uh, the reason is to discuss some issues that are arising from uh, some of the deplorable roads in my municipality. And then to the turn of the feeder roads, with the information and somehow, I'll call it a report given to me, we observe or realize almost all the feeder rules in the municipality, almost all of them are being given on contract. But what is happening is that we can't see the contractors on site. I asked him to finish my office with the name of the contractors so that we can talk to some of them. And then he also uh, uh, briefed me that some of the contracts are being considered to be terminated because they are, the, the contractors are not moving to site. He however noted that management of the waste companies have been charged to fumigate the landfill site to prevent any health complications. It's part of their, their contract to be fumigating the area so that they'll prevent some of this, this thing. If they cannot prevent it, at least they'll mitigate the effects of these flies in these communities. Uh, this is coming to me now. I'll, I'll schedule a meeting with, with the management of Zoom Lion and other people that I must talk to, and uh, my meho will call them so that we, we see how we can handle this issue. Apart from that, you know, there is a, a original engineering landfill site uh, ongoing. It's almost done. Any moment from now, the machines, the installation of the machines will begin. Residents here at Klepet de Mete, Akrofo, Ziavi Adukope, and other 
remote communities in their home municipality are calling on the government to, as a matter of urgency, fix this road, which also leads to the municipality's landfill site. According to the residents, they are unable to cut their goods to the whole central market and other bigger markets in the Volta region as a, uh, as a result of the bad nature of this road. Right, so that is another challenge all the way in Ho in the Volta region. Selassie um, Ago is, oh, Desmond Selassie Ago, yeah, it is our, David, what is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> Desmond joins us, he's our regional correspondent. Hi, Desmond, thank you for joining us on Breakfast Daily. Good morning, everyone. Right, so tell us much more about this, especially, you know, um, we've seen um, the devastating nature of the road, but I'm particularly concerned about the landfill site. How terrible is this? Um, Prima, uh, the landfill site is some um, few minutes after the Clefet de Mete community, and the Clefet de Mete community is some um, five to ten minutes drive from the regional capital who, uh, and the municipality is a very big one to so convey all refuse to the landfill site. You can you can just imagine how big the place is. Mm. So uh, residents there, re residents there are just concerned that flies hover around the place, coming to their uh, mm. farms and also their community, and this is posing as a, a, a health uh, situation for them, which they want it to be addressed. Right, now what are authorities doing about this? Uh, so uh, I was speaking to the MT that's behind Boston and he told me that uh, authorities of the waste companies have been charged to fumigate the landfill site. Mm. Yes, so currently that, that's what we will be checking up on now to see if really the uh, waste companies are indeed fumigating or taking good care of the place. Right now, let's come back to the road. You know, um, um, we are seeing the road. I, I'm not sure if I should call it a road or a water body because it's quite confusing, you know, or two in one, a road and a water body merged, you know. I mean, how is this affecting? We've heard some um, residents talk about it, but from where you sit and from your assessment, how terrible is this situation? Uh, so in my, in my view and what the people have been telling me, they call it a fish pond. They call the road a fish pond. And I don't because, think they uh, are wrong. Pardon? I said I don't think they are wrong. Yes, they are not wrong in that in that case because the road is full of uh, water. Given that we are in the rainy season where it rains almost every day, passing through that stretch to go, which is just a few minutes, mm. it, it, it's not in a good shape. And uh, uh, the residents have been telling me how bad it is conveying their farm products uh, produced to the market. And this has made it impossible for them because most of their goods tend to uh, get spots in the farm. Mm. And the roads, which is just down a few minutes to go, they, they don't know why it is in that state. And also because uh, the land source site is just a few minutes or just close to the community where uh, these waste trucks pass every day. They don't know why authorities of the waste companies will not also push for the road to be constructed for them. This will, uh, according to them, this, this will be a benefit to both the waste companies and also the farmers in their community. So, so that the road that we saw, okay, the road we are seeing um, on our screens that has the fish pond, uh, for want of a better word, in the middle of it, is that a farmland? Does it lead to uh, maybe the township? Uh, does it lead to some schools and places like that? Or is it just a farmland? Well, it leads to communities, mm -hmm. the Javi Adukofe, uh, Akrofu, which are just after Clever uh, Temete. So, so we have schools uh, also there. There's an ongoing project uh, for the construction of a chips compound, which has stored also for some years now. So there are communities ahead. You can pass that route to Clever uh, Pandu and other communities. So, yes, there, there are communities ahead. Um, school children using this road. Desmond? Yeah, I can hear you. Yes.
Did you, did you hear my question? I'm asking if on a normal um, Monday to Friday you will find school children using this road. Oh, yes, yes, yes. You can you, you see school children passing there almost every day because mm -hmm. most of the schools in the community are not uh, developed or well, well to do school. So most of the villages or community folks there send their school uh, going children to nearby cities, the whole and other places where school is, is uh, more vibrant so school children use that that stretch almost every day now i don't know i don't know if you follow the story of um maybe school children you know using the road um when it is in this state when it has rained and how they are able to you know maneuver and um, get around because i see the the water in the middle of the yeah, road the and road. there yeah. is nowhere you know to kind of dodge and use so how would they do this do you know so if they are not in a car, if they are not fortunate enough to be in a in a, a, a taxi or something like that, they will have to walk through the the water. Wow. So that they, uh, they get there, they remove their slippers, their shoes, walk through, it, get to the other end of the of the road. Wow. They clean themselves before they walk again to school or wherever they are going to. So so it's it, it's a very bad it's it's in a very bad state that school shouldn't have to suffer using the road. Hmm. Desmond, thank you. Welcome, Fima. Hmm. It's, it's very disturbing. I mean, I, I, I can't, I can't. There's no other way to describe it. You know how we, after sixty what, something sixty-five, years, 65 plus years yeah. of our independence, we. Part of the problem I feel is that we haven't decided what we want. You know, as a nation, um, there's a lot of. But do we even want something? <sighs> Apart from the greed that makes us. Yeah, do we do we look like we want for something? Ourselves as individuals, we're not really th thinking about Ghana as a nation and what we want as a collective, because until we decide that, a lot of things will be left und untouched. A lot of things will be left undone, just because when somebody comes, they decide that. This is what I want to do, and let me see what I can get from being here yeah. whilst I'm here. You know, and this is this keeps going on. Yes. Look, we have to get to the place where ministers start resigning because they've done a poor job. We have to get to the place where people get jailed after their time in office because they did a terrible job. They they absconded with state funds. We we and we will get there. You know, so. Yes. You see, for me, David, I think that the people, we the people, should hold people responsible. I agree. Okay? We should move away from... Because in this country, in Africa, yeah. ministers would not, on their own, resign. No. But people should begin to hold mm. leaders accountable. Yeah. Do not vote for them mm. because they have not performed. Yeah. Don't follow NPP or NDC or PPP or CPP and go and vote because at the end of the day, that will not fix the road. So do not go and vote for somebody simply because you think that you're an NPP person or NDC person. The person is also NPP. So as for me, I'm voting for my party. Can the person solve your problem? This is why we are where we are today. People are not looking at those who are doing the job. Mm. We all sit down and complain. Yet the next election, the person will win yeah. because we are voting on party colors. If we continue to do this, look, that people don't have any, uh, uh, I mean, thing to justify why they are in office. And so we'll just be complaining, talk, 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 talk. Why should school children go through this? We talk about patriotism. Patriotism is not in the national pledge or national <laughs> anthem. We should see it to mm. develop the love for our country. Now, if children are going through this, you think they want to stay in this country? <laughs> well, uh, we have the MC on the line, uh, Divine Boson. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Yes, sir. Uh, welcome to Breakfast Daily. Thank you, my brother. All right, so uh, let's uh, talk about the landfill situation, first of all. Um, how far have you gone as far as uh, plans to solve the problem there? Is it only a fumigation thing, or there's a plan to actually, uh, you know, fix the situation on the ground permanently? Uh, 
All right, thank you. I, I sorry, I think there is a little deviation on the proud notice given to me by your person to talk about the Akrofo Klepe feeder rules under construction. That was what I was told. Okay. About. I am traveling this morning. Yeah. And I don't have record that record on what uh, you just asked, but I will give you a brief uh, on, on it. Then we move on. Uh, uh, the landfill site at Akrofo has been under operation by the Home Minister Assembly for some time now, and uh, it's been managed by the Assembly and then Zoom Lion. Uh, I am happy to announce to you, your viewers and listeners, that under the able leadership of the Investor Nana Dudanko Akufado, with a partnership in a partnership with Zoom Lion, we are building engineering or we are engineering the place with a new design to contain uh, uh, all the waste that we, we generate in, in and around whole municipality. Because what we are building, the, uh, the municipality alone cannot feed it. So that is what we are doing now. But in the interim, we are still uh, dumping our uh, waste over there and is being managed by ourselves and the Zoom Lions, as and when the place is filled up, we move in to, to, to work on it. And then uh, for fumigation, is a continual uh, exercise by the Zoom Lion. Uh, last, last week, your reporter came to my office and uh, reminded me of it. And I said, okay, uh, it is something we've been doing all this while, but I will alert or talk to Zoom Lion which I did, and I think today the situation will never be the same as it was uh, last, like the last time. Okay, just quickly before we move on from the, um, the, the sanitation situation, uh, I noticed in the footage that we, we saw on our, we seen on our TV that um, your waste is not segregated. You mentioned that Zoom Lion is the one that's handling that. Uh, I know Zoom Lion has... Um, you know, separation uh, uh, processes that they have available in Ghana. Um, is that not something that they are looking to be doing in the whole that, municipality? That, that, that is part of the, the engineering landfill site that we are uh, constructing in partnership with Zoom Lion. And when that is done, there will be segregation in our waste. We will or those ones that can be dissolved or decay in the mm. sun and all those ones, mm. the bottles and all, will be segregated okay. uh, when that is done. But now we we are dumping uh, all in all at one place. Okay, let's talk about the roads then. Um, when are we beginning to see work on these roads that we're, we're looking at? Because it's really terrible. Yes. Uh, this is very, very, very of interest to everybody in the country, not only who, but let me narrow it to my municipality. Uh, last week, or two weeks ago, I, am privileged, I was privileged to uh, meet the Cedar Rose Regional Engineer and then Highways Regional Engineer. We had a discussion on our road network and I was so surprised for them to show me documents on the feeder rules, the feeder rule network in the municipality. And the document is indicating that over 90% of my feeder rules in the municipality is given on contract. And the contractors are rather not on site. So we had a, a discussion and as to what we should do next, they, they have given me some advices which I am working on. If these things are done, my brother, who assembly need not to go and lobby for any other road construction because most of our roads will be, will, will be covered. But the issue is about the contractors who uh, these contracts are awarded to and, and they, are, they are not on site. Some of them have not even commenced. Uh, 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 contrasting of these rules. These are the problems that we are facing in our country, for that matter, 
whole municipality. No, so as an as the MC, I mean, what is it that you are doing to get the contractors on the road? Because it's your jurisdiction in which they are building roads, and so if they're not on site, um, I mean, apart from having a meeting with feeder roads, uh, what what exactly are you doing to make sure that yeah. your roads get started? My, my brother, it is true we are practicing uh, decentralization, but some of these things are more or less centralized. It is not a contract awarded through the assembly, but it's rather awarded from Accra through the regional uh, 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 roads and highways offices. But notwithstanding, notwithstanding, since I'm the rep of the, the, the central government in charge of whole municipality, it behoves on me to know who and what uh, uh, kind of contractors are on what particular road and what they are doing. So I have taken stock of these things. That was why I invited the managers, regional managers of this sector. They, they've given me some uh, technical and uh, legal uh, advice which I am working on. I am sorry, I can't disclose it on, on tele or radio now, but because of what they, they, they told me. But we were able to get some of them back to, 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 to site. If you want to talk of Ziavi, uh, through uh, Ziavi, Jogbe, to Amfueta, uh, it is even on contract before even this government came to office. Honorable. But, 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 hello? Yeah, honorable. So, so, how many contractors are back on site? So far, so far, one of them. That's all through the counseling given by these people. And we were able to uh, follow up on these contractors. I am happy to announce the one on the AV, uh, Amfueta Road is back and work is, 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 is ongoing steadily. Right, Honorable. So when did he, um, this contractor get back to work? Which one? Um, the, the contractor one. who is now back to work, you know, to the... About, a, yeah. a, a, about a week now, he's back to work, and he's working marvelously on the road. It's about engagement sometimes. Uh, that's why I said I can't disclose what they told me. No, that is okay. Engagement. Honorable, that, that is okay. We are not even interested in that. When is he finishing the work? Yes, the job is supposed to be completed over years ago. Over years ago. So, per your new engagement with them, when is he finishing the work? I think by, by the end of the year, we should be able to see uh, the road completed. And the other areas, when do we have these contractors also coming back to work? They have not, apart from him and, and one other road, uh, uh, oh, uh, or Joto Kukwe stretch of road that was ongoing before he also uh, vacated uh, the, the, the site. Uh, the others have never reported at all, but I am I am chasing them to to have. Uh, I'm engaged. I'm trying to get them to engage them so that we can understand ourselves. You know, we must give value for money. All these things are what the country is facing. And, and something must be done about it. If you apply for a contract, a contract is given, and you will not go to site to do the job. And you will be there the pointy finger. I think the narrative must change with whole municipal assembly. That's what I'm trying to do. No, so, so what seems to be the problem? Is it that they are falsifying the fact that they can actually handle the project? Or what's going on here? I'm, I'm not quite understanding the issue. Yes, about the one on site now complain about payment about payment and and the one Hojo who Hojo Tokokwe also complained about payment. But the others have never gone to site to complain about payment or anything. And but 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 but, even started the job. but the contracts have been awarded to them. Yes. And what are you doing about it, Honorable? That is why I told you they have given me some technical advice and some still legal counseling that there should, there should be a, a way we go about this thing, which I am doing. When, when, when uh, 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 it's not able to go my way, then the, the, the other legal side will step in and let we will do the need for. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome, and thank you for engaging me this morning. Good morning to yourself and your viewers all over the globe. Right. Yeah.
So we, we, we speak of decentralization, but it's a joke, clearly, because um, first of all, decentralization <laughs> means that the, 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 the people who are away from yeah. the center are actually autonomous and independent and functioning mm -hmm. as such. Mm -hmm. But here's a case where he's off-site in a, in a, in a, in a non-central location and mm -hmm. cannot function. He has, to, he has to refer back to, uh, you know, the ministry, yeah. you know, and everything has to go back to the ministry. And yeah, the, the ministry that is handling feeder roads, urban roads, mm -hmm. and all of that. Mm -hmm. It's like he's out there in his district, in his municipality, but he can't really function. He doesn't have authority. No, I, I agree that we have issues with decentralization, okay, but I also believe that we, we complain about everything. Okay, I, I absolutely no, agree. But there's I mean, nothing to a... complain about. There's nothing to complain about, right? But uh -huh. here's a case where we, the, he, he is complaining. He should not be complaining. That is my issue. He is a leader. He shouldn't you, be that complaining. That is my worry, you know. He should because... be looking for solutions. Thank and, you and very we... much. Yes, there's decentralization problem. Yeah. But you, you have been given a certain task. You knew the challenges that comes with this task. You yeah. said, yes, I can do it. Mm. So you go there, don't come back and give us problems. Don't yeah. come back and tell us that, yeah, because I'm sitting there. Da, da. Because as you sit here today, you know that decentralization is a problem. Yeah. You know that if you are asked to maybe go to the passport office in Kumasi, yeah. these are some of the challenges you are going to face. Yeah. But of all the many people we have in this country, really we believe that chosen. you can do yeah. it. When they asked you, can you do it? You said yes. Yes. So what is the issue? We come back to ask you a and question you, and, and you, you tell us You are now complaining yo. as if you were asked. So if you are complaining, what should the drivers do? What should the farmers do? <sighs> this is the problem. You have access to authority. You have access to power. You are complaining. What do we have to do? Uh, anyway, he says he's been giving technical and legal advices. So Which he can't disclose. So anyway, we just yeah. hope that we'll see the road fixed very soon. Mm. That is if we will. This is Breakfast Daily. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back. The hashtag is Breakfast Daily if you're watching us on social media. If you happen to uh, watching us on regular TV and you want to WhatsApp us and let us know what you're thinking about the different conversations that we're having, it's 05505-85832. Now, a few weeks ago, we brought you, well, this was for the second or third time, we brought you some stories from Bimbila, the hospital in Bimbila, and the water situation that was there. Well, there seems to be a bit of a breakthrough, and it's uh, good news. We have a report for you. Let's take a look at this one. TV, they say, gets results. Following reports by City News on the disconnection of water supply to the Bimbila Government Hospital by the Bimbila Water System, for non-payment of water bills amounting to over 23,000 Ghana cities, and how the situation was negatively affecting health delivery at the facility. Some persons have come to the aid of the hospital. Some Turkish citizens resident in Ghana in collaboration with a youth group in Nanung called Strategic Initiative for Peace Building have donated a mechanized borehole to the hospital to help mitigate the water challenges. Turkey's businessmen in Accra, Tayal Ali Sabiha and Mohamed Sabedir have, after watching the City News report, decided to assist the hospital with a sustainable source of water. The project cost almost 20,000 Ghana cities. At a handing over ceremony, the representative of the Turkish community, Saibu Kama, says this will go a long way to help the hospital. Um, this borehole uh, has been donated by the Turkish community in the name of um, Tayyar Ali and then Sabi Hagur to Bimbila Hospital. Uh, this was initiated by Mr. Mehmet Sevindir who is a businessman located at Spintex in Accra. Uh, this was something that our people needed and then uh, we forwarded it to him and he being a, a very good businessman, not only to do business in Ghana, but to, to make the people also benefit from him. He came to our aid and donated this uh, to our community. The administrator of the Bimbila Hospital, Mr. Abdullahi Shahadu, was full of gratitude to the donors. Today I'm very, very happy. 
and uh, I have no ways to express my happiness. Because water is very central in the provision of health services. And with this donation, it is coming to solve most of our problems, especially uh, in the area of diseases that are water related. For instance, in the health sector, for instance, we now practice what we call IPC. And water is very central if we want to uh, practice IPC effectively. So I want to assure the tennis community and its partners that uh, we will ensure preventive maintenance to ensure that this facility, this water facility, lasts longer. A staff chief in Dimbila who graced the occasion urged management of the hospital to take good care of the facility. The PRO of the youth group, CPEP, Mohamed Abdelbasid, who commended the, the Turkish community and City News for highlighting the plight of the hospital. The strategic initiatives for peace building uh, is very happy that today we are all celebrating this very success story. Uh, we would also want to thank City News for playing a very significant role in highlighting the plight of the people because the reports that came about a disconnection actually raised concern. And as a youth group operating in town, that is... Now, Mohamed Alabira is our Northern Regional Correspondent and he joins us on the line. Hi, good morning, Mohamed Alabira. Hi, I'm Good morning. <laughs> right, so, so um, just tell us what this means, you know, to the hospital and also to the people of uh, Bimbila. In fact, it's a great relief to the people of Bimbila or for that matter, the people of the Eastern Corridor. Because water challenge at the Bimbila Hospital used to be a very serious one, where patients, you know, Bimbila is a central, uh, is at the center of the Eastern Corridor, where communities close by and even districts beyond, like uh, Pandai, or some places or sea region, they all used to bring, they all bring their patients to the Bimbila Hospital, and because of the water situation, it was a serious uh, challenge for them there. And they will also have to uh, refer patients to the nearest town, which is Yendi. So yesterday, what happened, but it's a great relief to the people of Bimbila and the management of the hospital. Right. Um, Mohamed, so, yes, so, I, so my, my, my question, do you remember when we had this conversation a few weeks ago, I uh, asked the question about, uh, you know, the what the issue of the, maybe like the water levels are like in Bimbila and could they not have a borehole? And you mentioned that uh, there was one about 400 meters away, you know. Um, so where is this borehole situated? Is it on the hospital premises? Thank you, boss. Um, actually, yes, it is at the, in the hospital premises, but a, a few meters away from the... You remember that day I told you there is the, uh, the mortuary is there, and yes. people concern with that. Maybe if they dig it close to the mortuary, there could be other issues there. So this one is a bit far away from the from 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 the place. Okay. All right. All right. So so this is, will serve the hospital exclusively. Yes, the hospital and uh, and the quarters nearby. Okay. You know the uh, the staff quarters by to okay. serve them. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Alaji. All right. Okay. So that's our colleague, uh, Mohammed Amin al Arbira, who brought us that report. Good news there. Um, like he said in the report, TV gets results. Yeah. You know, yeah. So some relief for the people of Bimbila. And it costs um, 20,000 Ghana cities. Yeah, which is 
about two thousand. About two thousand for less than two thousand five hundred. Two thousand yeah. four hundred mm. and some coins. Mm. You know, mm. and it solved the whole problem. Yeah. Look at the back and forth between the Ghana Water Company yeah. and the hospital management. Yeah. And I mean, sometimes the decision making 000. process sometimes is very it's very difficult for me to understand. If I was Ghana Water, mm -hmm. Ghana Water has solved water problems in certain communities actually by digging boreholes mm -hmm. for the communities. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not something that is unknown to Ghana yeah. Water. What I find strange is that, let's say seven years ago, six years ago, five years ago, why, why was there no initiative to say, you know what, you people, it seems as though you're having challenges with the payment systems, you're quite remote, you serve 65 different communities and so on. Listen, let's give you a borehole you'll be independent from the system. I don't know what seems to be the challenge when it comes to that kind of decision making, you know, for us to come to this point, you know, um, 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 yeah. Well, anyway, we've been joined by the godsend, the philanthropist who has made sure um, that Bimbala General Hospital has water. Saibu Kama Zubir is this godsend. Thank you very much for your time. Welcome to Breakfast Daily. Thank you so much. Good morning and good morning to your listeners. Good morning. Now, why did you do this? Uh, well, um, Bimbila is my hometown. It's my community as well. And uh, when I learned about the situation, I was really sad because it's my own people who go to the hospital. Uh, I don't think strangers come there apart from the people from my own community. That's why I was so much touched. Right. So from the day you saw the report or you heard the report um, on the challenges they have and getting some um, a borehole, uh, a drilling company to come do this job and handing over, how long did this take? Well, when, we, when I heard the story, you know, I had contact the Turkish community and they also had to secure funds and that took like uh, two weeks uh, to to secure the funds and then start the processes uh, until the, I think maximum was like three weeks that we used to finish everything. Hmm. Right. Now, um, we all see the challenges that government has, you know, in bringing development to some of these areas. And that is why I will commend you, you know, as uh, a citizen of the area, taking the initiative to bring some kind of respite to your people. What advice would you give other citizens of the country? Well, the thing is, um, the only thing I would say is that uh, our lives and our development depend on us, not only on government. If you have, or if you have the opportunity to solve the other problems of your community, don't wait for the government to come and do it. You can equally do it, and that contributes to the development of the country as a whole, not only your community. Saibu, so thank you very much. You're welcome. Madam. Right. Uh, yeah. So I just want to say that. Yeah reiterate yeah. that it took three weeks, three weeks. you know yeah. from learning about the problem yeah. to going to um, the Turkish company yeah. to raising the funds to getting the job done to mm. handing over mm. it took three weeks yeah. yeah and mind you the people who gave the money don't live in Bimbila they probably have never been to Bimbila may never even go to Bimbila to do anything they will not use the hospital facility there. And so for me, this speaks to a lot more than just what we saw on TV, the mindset, the thinking, the, the understanding of what it means to be human, you know, and showing humanity, um, even though you will not go and drink the water yeah. from the place, yeah. but others will drink from it, and yet you've invested in it, you know. And I think that um, one of the calls we made was, we're asking, what about the... the, the senior people in society yeah, exactly. who come from Bimbila. Yeah. Remember we, yeah, we made I a mean, call on that. Exactly, you know, exactly. We don't understand it, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. um, that, that there are people in our society, in government, you know, you in know, places of power. You know, some people, and yet, you watch. Some people yeah. decided that every Easter, mm. we will go back to our home. Yes. You know, we will make sure that this becomes something that yeah. we will do to build mm. our own place. Yeah. Years down the line, yeah. you know, 
Kwewu is a big deal yes. during Easter. Yeah. This is some people's hometown yeah. that they decided that, look, we are going to bring development. Yeah. Look at what it has generated. So yeah. I think that we all can, you know, sometimes come in and help. Yeah. That is, if you have the strength and the ability to do so. If you decide to follow politicians, trust me, you won't go to heaven because you won't do no good thing. <laughs> so sometimes just ignore some of these things and help when you can.